This is my first custom ASIC. ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. That basically means that I designed the circuits inside of it. And unlike FPGAs, which are field programmable gate arrays, these circuits are etched into the silicon for the eternity of time. It's basically a unique chip that fulfills a specific purpose. In that case, it's my purpose. So what does it do? It does a plenty of things. To be precise, there are 165 different designs on this chip. And one of the designs is the one that I want to highlight today. For this specific design, this is the final board carrying the ASIC. It's a quite simple board, but I still needed three iterations, which I will go into detail in a minute. Quite useless on its own. It's the most basic design that you can imagine. It basically carries a file, a secret file. And that file can be read out like a ROM. So this board is basically a shield that I connect to my VGA board. Why do we need a VGA board for that? Yeah, because it's a graphical file. We can read it out with the ESP32, decode it and display it on the VGA screen. You might be confused at this point why there are 165 different designs on this chip. The answer is because it's the open source Tiny Tapeout 2 0 to ASIC course chip. Many people contributed in that. And all the designs are described in a PDF, except for the contents of the secret file. And here is the reveal what it contains. It's the world's first rickroll etched into silicon. It actually only contains this animated GIF of 32 by 32 pixels in very reduced colors because I didn't have a lot of space to put a huge ROM in there. The complete file is only 512 bytes big and that already had a high utilization on the IC itself. That means my tile was really packed with wires and gates, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So how did this start? So Matt Van, who does the 0 to ASIC course, asked me if I want to participate in Tiny Tapout 2, which I found really groundbreaking. What Tiny Tapout tries to do is basically what the PCB manufacturers did to the circuit design, just on microscopic level. For in my opinion, a little fee, you can put the circuit design on there. Almost no prior knowledge is required. You can use a WOCWI graphical interface to design a circuit, but also uploading Verilog like I did. You just need to clone a repository and everything is handled by GitHub Actions afterwards. The internals of the chip work like that. There is an actual microcontroller in that chip called Caraval, which encloses all the tiles of the tiny tape out. This Caraval basically manages uh, the bus and the pin configurations and so on. And my designs are basically small parts of this big area on the silicon. They are all interconnected by a bus system. On Tiny Tipa 2 that was a serial bus which was way slower than what's done right now. So now you have a ton of different designs on this IC and there are pins to configure which design you want to select to be active at the time. You get like a sophisticated board where you can select the project with the dip switches, select the input and you will receive the output bits on this seven segment display, which is actually eight segments with the dot. But you can also connect P mods, which are extension boards or jumper wires like I did for a different project on there that I will talk about another time. So I actually can test all the 165 projects on the tiny tape out chip. There are some crazy designs on there, like actual FPGAs. They're not big, but still. This little IC is like a treasure box for nerds like me. So Matt asked me if I want to participate in Tiny Tapeout 2. The issue was I only had three days until the deadline and I really wanted to contribute. At that time I was just learning Verilog for my FPGA coding uh, for these FPGAs here from GoWin. That's just yet another project. I quickly made a persistence of vision controller that works with the speed of the scan chain on this chip and submitted it as fast as possible. 
and then I came up with some improvements and actually uploaded two more designs for this controller. At the end I still had a few hours left and I thought maybe I should also upload a meme project and so I came up with this rigorous secret file. The issue was you have to deploy it to see if it fits in your tile and you can't tell beforehand how many bytes you can fit in one tile. So I was downsizing the GIF file more and more until it actually fit. Well, the quality suffered a little bit, but still it's the world's first. The cool thing about Tiny Tapeout is that all my designs are on the same chip, so I only need one board and actually the other designs were way cheaper. So once that was committed, Matt basically combined all those projects into one big file that was submitted to the foundry. The cool thing about it, every single tool used in this whole development chain was actually open source. A slight disadvantage compared to PCB manufacturing, which can be done within 24 hours, is that the foundries take a while longer. In that case it was 9 months or something. So yeah, you have to be patient here. And only after that we were able to see if the chip even works. Since it was a new design for the scan chain and everything around that, it could internally just short out and all the time would be wasted. But we were fortunate. So I designed an extension board for the IC with all the caps and a voltage divider for the 1.8 volts core voltage, uh, which I was too lazy to put there a voltage regulator. I just used two equal resistors to split the 3.3 volts in half. Oh well, that's good enough. And just as I submitted my design, Matt and I discovered that there is a slight issue with uh, the scan chain, which transports the input and output data in the chip. Usually you would be able to configure this scan chain externally on the pins without the need to use the Caravel microcontroller internally. But unfortunately only one slight default definition for a pin was wrong. So there was no way of communicating correctly with the chip externally. So I actually had to add the flash with the code for the Caravel that configures the pins internally. That's a bummer because at this point I could just put a file on the flash as well without needing the ASIC here. But oh well, still counts. I changed the design and submitted it to Eisler again, which is today's sponsor. Eisler was unfortunately so fast they already finished making the first version of the board and it was already shipping to me why. I submitted the new revision, so I actually never populated the first design and was just waiting a few days to receive the second one. Eisler is a long time sponsor of me right now and we did a ton of cool projects already. They always try to improve and listen to the community. For the assembly they also support LCSC now and the newest advances under the hood are with the speed of the blitz boards. If you order before 6 am your boards will be shipped within 24 hours, which is really fast. So now the slowest part about PCB manufacturing could be actually the shipping itself. But I really love it that we are able to make a new revision on stream and have the boards arrived before the next stream to be tested. And now it's even faster than that, so I can take a day to think about my life choices. <laughs> if you use the code BOARDLUNI, you will get a few bucks off, so give it a try. So the boards arrived and we assembled it on stream.
And then this happened. Plugging it in. The USB controller of my PC turned off. So there was something wrong. Hey, at least it doesn't smoke. And we quickly discovered that, yeah, I didn't use a footprint for my extension board and one of the headers was basically flipped. Okay, easy fix. We can connect the 3.3 volts. There is no di data pins to rewire here. That's, that's, that's a good one. Fake counter plus 1000. 3.3 volts was connected to VBus, which is terrible because we get like everything is powered by, by 5 volts. But also ground is connected to 5 volts and we have a 0 ohm resistor between 5 volts and VBus because that usually would be either a diode or the polyfuse, but I have a zero ohm resistor on this board. So it was instantly shorted. I hope this way, like the USB shut down before, before any harm could happen to the board at the, uh, <laughs> the 3.3 volt line. Uh, too bad. Okay. I will, do a new revision. Should we should we do like a quick fix and just order it? Yeah, let's let's do it. Oh well, yet another fix, and it looks like we need a third version here. I was just hoping that the ASIC didn't die because the IC is quite rare. I have only three in total, which are all allocated to different projects already. Isla delivered, and I salvaged some parts of the old board, of course, including the ASIC, and populated the new one. Uh. <laughs> Tombstoning! <laughs> I see, now I smear, I will smear the whole paste, but you know what? It doesn't matter at all. Boop, 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 boop. Ah! It was also the first time trying the pixel pump uh, on the stream. This is the first time I, I have used this at all. Cool. Yeah, I'm getting familiar with that. It's certainly better than using sticky tweezers. of truth okay it didn't shot out and the ASIC didn't get warm I still wasn't sure if it would work at all the ASIC could be destroyed in the last attempt and also my crude voltage divider for the 1.8 volts might not be good enough as well the selection of the project on the ASIC was hard-coded at the pins but I still needed to run Caravel to configure the pins correctly and Caraval needs a clock signal. So I used the ESP32 to generate this clock signal using PWM. We started with a slow clock. Houston, we have a clock. Okay, we need to increase the frequency. 10 kilohertz. And actually something was happening there. At 1 megahertz, it's, it's blinking like that. We saw slow blinking, which means the scan chain is functional. I increased the clock more and more and tried to read out the bytes. A few hours of embarrassing attempts on live Let's stream. See what the monitor says. Still zero. As soon as I got off stream, I found my bug in the code. Oh, nice. I was actually able to read out the bytes from the secret file. When you see the zeros, that's the padding at the end of the file. So it's only so much data and then boop, regular text. Let's do that. Reading file, 512 bytes, and they are padded. Ah, it's a GIF. The file starts with the GIF header. Oh, here, there is Netscape. And after the end of the file, I even put Bitluni there. Nice. So on the next stream, we just needed to decode the animated GIF. Moment of, oh no, nothing. Which isn't as straightforward. 
I used Larry's library, which is quite fast and works also on the ESP32. Moment of truth. After oh. a little bit of struggling here again. <laughs> okay. It's uploading. You're live to see what's burned into onto the ASIC. <laughs> <laughs> we finally were successful. And that's basically it. My first custom ASIC project is Rickroll, etched for the eternity of time into silicon. World first Rickroll on ASIC. <laughs> No, there is no, no, there is no other GIF file. This is it. I hope you enjoyed this little journey of mine. I have a few more ASIC projects on there that I want to share. Thank you to Isla. Please check them out. Check out also Tiny Tape Out. And I also linked the FPGAs in the description if you're interested in starting Verilog as I did back then. Big thanks to my amazing supporters. And if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. And I see you next time. Bye. This is so stupid. Such a waste of of resources. <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs>